guys. Um, today I'm going to be doing some decoupage and when I talk to my customers, one of the biggest concerns I hear about decoupage is that they, they don't want to have wrinkles um, in their decoupage project. So I'm going to show you guys the iron on decoupage um, process today because it's a way for you to decoupage without any wrinkles. Seriously, any wrinkles. And so we're gonna do that project today. Um, I'm gonna be working with several products today. I'll be using Wise Owl's One Hour Enamel is actually what I'm gonna be decoupaging with today. But you can also use Wise Owl's Varnish if that's something that you guys already have in your craft stash. You can use this to decoupage or to do this process as well. So either the clear One Hour Enamel or um, Wise Owl's Varnish will work for this process. I'm also using a piece of recycled decoupage paper, and this one is called Summer Birds. Um, I always say it's every time I show a paper, I say it's one of my favorites, but um, this, is, <laughs> this is legit one of my favorites. Um, I love the floral on the dark background, and so we're gonna put um, this little birdie right here on this piece of wood, and we're gonna use the iron on method so that we don't have any wrinkles. Hi, my name is Royce Hunt Bell, owner and operator of Royce Cycle the Treasures. Thank you so much um, for joining me on my video today. So let us get started. So when I'm using a regular household iron today, you guys, for the iron on um, process. It's because I'm working on a board that is so large. If you're working on a smaller project, you can use the hanger iron. It's a really small seaming iron or a quilting iron. The heads are really small. Um, and that can be really helpful to help you get into um, different, um, like really tight spots on your furniture pieces. But I'm gonna put my iron on wool so it's hot. And I'm gonna make sure that it's off and I don't have any water in my iron. So you want a dry, hot iron for this process. And so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now, um, the steps I'm gonna take to prep my board for the ironing on of the paper, I'm gonna put one coat of the one hour enamel and I'm gonna let that layer completely dry. Then I'm gonna put a second coat and I'm gonna let that layer completely dry. Then I'm gonna put a third coat and I'm gonna let that layer completely dry. And then I'm gonna iron on my paper. I like using three layers to ensure good adhesion initial, initially, um, and to make sure that I don't have issues with my paper popping up um, anytime in the future. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, some people ask me, why do I let my layers dry in between? If you try to lay down three layers at once, you're really not laying down three different layers because you're just reactivating the product that you already have on your surface and you're moving it around. So by letting them dry in between each layer, it really does allow you to stack three individual layers of product um, prior to ironing on your paper. So I'm gonna start with my one hour enamel because you guys know I'm using matte because that's what I love. And I'm just squirting a little bit into my bowl. You guys, these bowls are at Dollar Tree. You get 12 for a dollar. I love using them because you can reuse them and they're kind of disposable. When I'm laying down my medium, I wanna make sure that I put down um, a nice, even, generous coat on my surface. You can lean and look from the side to see if you've missed any areas, or you can also tell if there are areas where there's less product than there are in other areas. If you miss an area and you don't have enough product, what will happen is you'll end up with a bubble in that area in the future. So you really want to take your time, get a nice even coverage of your surface, and then kind of look from the side to ensure that um, you haven't left any areas that are dry or maybe they have very little product um, so that you don't have issues later with your paper adhering to your surface. I'm just going to take my craft dryer and dry this really quickly. Okay, so now that my surface is completely dry, I can put on my second layer. I'm going to follow the same principle, you guys. A nice, even layer, um, making sure that I get coverage across the entire board. If you don't get the edges covered perfectly, that's not a deal breaker, right? Because you can always go back underneath the edges with your brush. 
um, and apply more product, but you really wanna make sure that any area in the middle has really good coverage and really good even coverage, you guys, um, so that you don't have any issues with it bubbling up later. Now that my second coat is completely dry, you guys, I'm gonna do one last coat just for good measure. This coat will be a lot thinner than the others, um, but it'll help you even out any uneven distribution of product. And it just ensures that you're gonna have um, good adhesion, not just today while you're doing the product project, but um, moving forward. Now, if you're in areas where there is a lot of humidity, um, it'll take longer for your layers to dry. Um, you don't, if you do an iron on technique on a piece, um, you don't want to put that piece in direct sunlight because it may reactivate um, the product underneath and you may experience some bubbling. I personally prefer the traditional decoupage method, but I know that there are those of you who really like a nice, crisp, wrinkle free um, application, and this is probably the easiest way. Um, to make that happen. Okay, so now that our third layer is dry, you guys, we're finally able to move forward to the fun part. Now, just to recap what we've done, we put down one really generous, even layer of Wise Owl's One Hour Enamel, and we let that dry completely. We put down a second layer of One Hour Enamel, we let that dry completely, and then a last thin layer of why is that one hour enamel, one hour enamel <laughs> over the top, and made sure that that was completely dry. Now we're ready to move on um, to our next step, which is actually going to be ironing our decoupage paper onto the surface. So um, I've chosen Summer Birds to use for today's project. So my paper is bigger than my door. The sheets come in 20 inch by 30 inch sheets, you guys. And so they're made in a way um, that you can use them on furniture. They're scaled for furniture, but there are so many different elements in them. You can cut them apart for smaller projects as well. So I think that I want my stamps in there. So I'm gonna, this is where I'm going to situate it. Um, and I'll just trim that other paper off later, but let me trim this paper off in the bottom so that you guys don't have to listen to that the whole time I'm working. I'm trimming around this flower, you guys, because I want to keep that for another project. And um, just like with my transfers, you guys, I never throw away my decoupage scraps. I keep them. I use them for other projects. And so I have a gorgeous flower um, that I can use for something different another day. So I'm gonna set that aside. And um, now that we have this ready, so before you guys iron your um, tissue paper, you wanna make sure that you have a barrier between your paper and the iron, because the last thing you wanna do is scorch your paper. So today I'm gonna be using a Teflon sheet. I like using the Teflon sheets because they're, um, they're pretty affordable, you guys. They're not very expensive, and you can use them multiple times. You can also use um, tissue paper. Um, I usually, if you're using like a 10 pound tissue paper, use like four sheets between, um, you know, your decoupage paper and the iron. If you're getting your tissue paper from Dollar Tree, you guys, make sure that the shiny side is not touching your paper or touching your iron because the shiny part of that tissue paper actually activates when it gets hot. So you wanna put those shiny areas together and you wanna iron on the matte side and you want the matte side um, to face your paper. You can also use parchment paper, and that's a really good way to have a barrier between your tissue paper and your wire as well. So um, with a lot of people going to non-disposable choices, I thought the Teflon would be a nice demonstration for the purpose of today's tutorial. So my iron's been sitting over there. I could hear it making noise. It's kind of scaring me a little bit, y'all. Um, and so it's all ready, 
And so I'm gonna make sure my sheet is straight and that's positioned exactly where I want it. And then I'm gonna start ironing. I like to be really um, deliberate and methodical about this process because I wanna make sure that I get adhesion across the entire surface. So I'm gonna do like a grid, you know, just to make sure um, that every surface is um, ironed down, you guys, and that I don't miss anything. So I'm gonna section this off in my mind into like quarters and make sure that I go over each quarter. When I'm ironing on my sheet, I just kind of fill it with my hand. Um, and once the surface is hot, then I know that um, my paper is adhered. And you don't wanna to apply too much heat, you guys, because you can actually apply too much heat and break down um, the product that you've just laid down. And we don't wanna do that either. So you wanna heat it up just enough to reactivate it. And I think that we are good. And you can tell, look at that, you guys, not a wrinkle in sight. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side the same way. And of course, it's easy for me to do this really large piece with a regular iron. But again, you can use a seam iron or a quilting iron. They're really small and their heads are really pointy. And those are good for smaller projects or um, even on your larger furniture projects. If you're working on like an inserted panel to be able to really get into the corners and make sure that your paper is adhered well. Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? Just like magic. And so I'm gonna do this top portion the same way. And so most of your work is really on the front end of the project when you're applying the product. Um, but once you get to the actual decoupage portion of it, there just really isn't a whole lot. And since I don't iron clothes anymore, this is a good reason for me to pull out my iron. <laughs> I know, pitiful, pitiful. Back in the day when my kids were younger, I actually used to enjoy ironing, but I think it was because it was a process that I didn't have to think about. Um, and there's something about the smell of the starch. My ex had to have starch shirts for his job. Um, and so that's what I would do is iron at night when the kids were all asleep and the house was quiet. I have a little area up here where I can tell it's not adhered well. So I'm going to go in with my iron and just go over that. And you can go around your piece and you can tell the areas where it's adhered really well and the areas where there may be, um, you know, Maybe you didn't get the iron there because we always think we've gone over the whole thing, um, but we can skip an area. Just like when you're applying their products and you look from the side, just to ensure that you've actually covered the entire surface. I just missed all the corners, you guys. And if you have an edge that's picking up, like on the edge, that's not a deal breaker because you can always go back in with product around the edge. I would prefer not to do that. I like for the paper to have the same character, you know, all the way through the paper. Um, and so there's no hurry, right? I can just take my time and make sure that, um, I've gotten all the areas adhered really well. And so just double checking that corner too. I'm fired. I think I'm always so focused on the middle um, that I do neglect the edges. Even when I'm laying down product, I find that that's where I have to go and reapply is around the edges, not in the middle. And so um, we are all done. It's all adhered. I don't have any areas that are bubbling up or 
that are lifting up. And so now I'm ready to move to the next step and that is trimming. Um, I have just, look at my little sad piece of sandpaper, you guys. It started off as 220, it's probably a 300 by now. I do like 220 the best. I feel like it's abrasive enough that you can trim really quickly, um, but it's not so abrasive that it's gonna score your paper. So this may take a little bit of effort because it, does, it is not, the grit is not as low or as high, but it'll be okay, or as low. So I'm trying to figure out which corner to be able to demonstrate the best. Um, let's pull it down here. I think in the middle of the table you should be able to see. So whenever I'm trimming, I always go in one direction. I only sand down. Um, if I sand up and down, I risk lifting my paper. If I sand left to right, I feel like I'm more apt to tear my paper. And so I literally just go one direction, just down, and what you end up with is a perfect edge on your decoupage. Um, it's really, really hard to cut a piece of paper the exact size and then you get it decoupaged on a piece exactly perfect. Um, one reason is because the paper actually stretches when it gets wet. Um, and so it literally changes sizes once it gets wet. And so this is just easier for me. I leave an overhang and then I go back in um, and I trim it afterwards. I'm really focusing on this edge when I'm trimming. And you see how I'm able to get um, that perfect edge on that piece simply by using my sanding block. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim the rest of this and then we'll show you guys a picture of the finished piece in just a moment. So now that it's all trimmed, you guys, um, we're almost done. So you can see how I've trimmed it. And so it's on here. We, we um, positioned our paper just the way we wanted to be able to show off the parts that we love, right? And now I'm going to seal this. Now, you guys, I'm gonna tell you guys this. Nobody ever listens to me, but I swear this is the God's honest truth. When you seal this, it is going to bubble up again. Do not mess with it. Just walk away. Walk away and leave it alone. And as it dries, the bubbles will go away. This is what happens. When I seal this, the product underneath is gonna reactivate. And the paper is gonna stretch because it's getting wet and so we're gonna end up with some bubbles. But as the paper um, contracts back to its original size, the paper will lay down and it will be fine. I promise, I promise, I promise. No one ever believes me. Just walk away and come back the next morning and your paper will be perfect. If, by chance, um, that does not happen and you do have bubbles when you come back, you can always go back over it with a Teflon sheet and heat and iron it down so that it's perfect again. So I'm just gonna take my brush and put over a top coat because I want my, pro my projects to be durable. So I, I always seal, you guys. And you see that? It's bubbling but I'm not panicking because I know what's gonna happen um, as the paper dries, those are going to go away. And so you guys tell me, Royce, I did that, and when I top coated, it was a bubbly mess. And you're right, look at it. It's a bubbly mess, but watch what happens as it dries. You guys can see, this is the corner that I'm drying and you see those wrinkles just going down, and this is where it's still wet. Now these wrinkles aren't gonna stay down right now because there's still a lot of moisture underneath here that needs to dry. But I just wanted to show you guys what happens as the paper dries. It does indeed flatten out and the wrinkles go away. So when you um, seal your piece, don't panic. Don't panic, I promise. Let it dry overnight. 
come back the next day, all of your wrinkles are going to be gone. If you do have a few wrinkles, you can just go back in with your Teflon or your parchment or your tissue paper as a barrier and use your iron and you can iron them back down and they will all go away. And so um, that is how I do the iron on decoupage method. Um, I hope you guys will try it and I'd love to see your projects when you guys are done. So the products that we used today was I started off my board with a coat of white primer. I always paint, paint white underneath my decoupage because I want my images to pop. Even though this has a dark background, there's a lot of light elements. So I wanna make sure that those light elements are gonna pop off of the dark surface. And so that's what the light color does for me. So I started off with a coat of Wise Owl's um, stain blocking primer in white. And then we used three coats of Wise Owl's One Hour Enamel. One coat, let it dry. Second coat, let it dry. Third coat, let it dry. Then we put our paper down and we used a Teflon sheet for a barrier today, but you can um, use parchment paper or tissue paper for your barrier. And we had our iron on wool. Um, you can use it on cotton, but you wanna be really careful because that's the hottest selling setting. Um, and we went over piece by piece and we ironed our tissue paper down. Um, now we've sealed it and it's a hot bubbly mess, but as this dries, the bubbles will settle down and you'll have a perfectly smooth um, decoupage project. So I hope you guys learned a lot from today's tutorial. I can't wait to see what you guys create. Um, thank you so much for joining us again. My name is Royce Hunt Bell from Royce Cycle the Treasures. If you guys would like to see more tutorials, be sure and subscribe to our channel. Um, if you click the bell, you guys will get an alert when we upload a new video. We're working on uploading new videos once or twice a week. So thank you guys so much. You guys have a blessed day. Bye.